Mike Pendleton here with SureDog.com. And today I'm super excited. Listen, I didn't want to start this off corny. I was debating back and forth if I was going to be corny to start this off. But his last fight, his first fight in the PFL was pretty nuts. The <laughs> one and only Tim Johnson. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is the first time we're ever talking. I hope it's not the last because of that dad joke. But uh, first and foremost, how are you, sir? I'm doing good. And it wasn't that corny. <laughs> it was it was pretty bad i was like i should do it i shouldn't do it but i decided to go <laughs> um it, it was a crazy fight uh and, and number one taking it on short notice i know you're <laughs> driving cattle across the country just uh how does someone like yourself instantly go from working you know your job to i gotta fight in two weeks yeah experience <laughs> um you know as much as I fought, um, you know, it's nice being in really good shape and being able to go 15 minutes, 25 minutes. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, you know, fighting is, you know, at this stage, is second nature. So, and uh, I'm not going to turn down an opportunity just because I, you know, can't go run a 5K. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what the heavyweight division is, is best for, right? You could just jump right in when, when you're called upon. Uh, but also, Let's go back to this fight against Danilo Marquez. Is that the craziest round, whether it be in the gym, sparring, fighting? Is that the craziest round you've ever been a part of? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, with ease. I think, uh, yeah, there's not even a close second. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm trying to think of something, but it just doesn't come. No, no uh, maybe, maybe the last time I was in, I fought in Nashville, uh, my, you know, against Rose Holt. That one was kind of, you know, kind of crazy, and then fight IQ was stupid, so I lost that one because of it. But yeah, no, this that doesn't hold a candle to this one. <laughs> what what's going? Obviously, low blows suck. I we don't need to talk about that. I I know how that is, right? But what's going through your mind? And just did you think like the fight had w was over, or can you take me through that chaotic moment when you get the low blow, he gets knocked out basically, and then you got to go do it again? Well, I didn't know I knocked him down. Um, I was oblivious, absolutely zero clue that I made connection. Uh, but none of that was making no, none of that I was even thinking of. All I was thinking of was this hurts and then let's get it to stop hurting. Uh, that was the only thing running through my head. Uh, you, you're long been a veteran of this sport in MMA and you've had stops in other promotions. You were a staple, you know, at the UFC and with Bellator. PFL is so different with the point style, uh, the playoff, the regular season, all of that. Uh, when you got the call, were you kind of just in like informed and, and had some knowledge on how it all worked out? Uh, yeah, a little bit. You know, um, yeah, you know, I was calling PFL prior, and you know they, you know, didn't didn't want me at that point in time at the beginning of the season. And I'm like, okay, um, so let's keep keep on trucking, literally. And uh, you know, got it was like two weeks before. Uh, and I was called to be a fill-in fighter, so just make weight, show up, make weight, no big deal. I'm like, yeah, I could do that. And then I just got done about nine or ten days before the fight. They just ran a load of uh, hogs from Kansas up to Minnesota and was unloading them, and then got a call from my agent that said I'm no longer a fill-in, I'm actually fighting. So I'm like, okay, all right. I suppose I should probably go to the gym once or twice here and get a, see if I still remember how to throw a punch. So uh, yeah, so it turned around pretty fast. <laughs> I would say so. I would say so. The good thing is you're not practicing on your job, right? You're not uh, throwing hands with the livestock and being like. <laughs> well, a little, a little bit. Uh, you know, some of the eight, nine hundred pound steers and heifers get pretty, pretty mean. Actually, I got, I got, I got a big old bruise on my hip right now from one that tried to run me down. Uh, but yeah, you know, so they they keep you edgy. Um, you know, I had, I've had to jump out of the trailer a couple times it keeps you on your toes <laughs> that is fantastic see i have so much respect for all fighters but someone like yourself just down to earth you know i live in missouri so hearing you're okay. just in kansas so it's like i don't oh. like, i don't understand because i could never do the job that you do either <laughs> of them that's why i do this uh but no, it's just it, it shows a different light of like who who fighters are right instead of just being like yep. i put on gloves and walk inside a cage and punch somebody else you know i love the human element of of you know, being outside of the cage. As someone who is a veteran in this sport, do you like the idea of what PFL is? You know, the regular season, and in one year, you could become a champion. Hell, in two weeks, you could be two fights away from a million dollars and a world title. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and I've said this in the previous interviews too. I'm like, I think they should almost go back to the, how they first started out the first year, or I think even their two year where you had to fight twice in one night. Uh, I, I think that's awesome. That's true tournament style. You know, you, you got to be a little more smart about it. You can't, you got to, you want to fight that first fight. You have to finish fast because you don't want 30 minutes of abuse, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. you know, and uh, I think honestly, I'm kind of made for that kind of uh, tournament style. You know, I'm good at taking a beating and just keep on going. Well, you'll take on Dennis Goldsoff August 2nd in Nashville, Tennessee. He's the number one seed. It's so weird here because, you you know, people, especially myself, I'm trying to inform everyone what, you know, PFL, point system, seeds, all that, how it all works. It's the first time here in the States where in combat sports, having a seed matters, you know. I, I just yep. tell everybody all the time, I'm like, are you a football fan? Okay, would you want your favorite team to be the third seed or the one seed? Like, it's the yeah. same kind of principle right yeah. but in fighting it's so much different so you throw that all out you've got a veteran and Dennis Goldsoff who's almost been there you know you're a veteran in yourself you're both trying to get to that million dollars in that world title what do you make of this matchup against uh Goldsoff uh you know I'm just gonna beat beat a beat a dead horse here because I've said the same thing in every interview Dennis to me is a b plus a minus in every aspect of the fight game um he's not overwhelmingly great he does he's not a plus at one thing like he's just really good at clinching at striking at kicks at grappling he's not there's not one spot of his game where he's he's got a weak spot um he's great at all of them uh so that's that that you know that brings up a few problems <laughs> on my end uh but uh you know he's a great competitor he's good he's a, you know good person uh i look forward to sharing the cage with him well, I don't want to ask all the same questions that every interview is asking. <laughs> you have so. it. You have it. Don't worry. <laughs> Good. Uh, ha have you had that moment? And, and I know it's one fight at a time, and I'm not trying to get too far ahead, but have you had that moment with yourself where you're like, all right, man, like two more wins, and I'm I got a million dollars in a world title? <laughs> no, no. We, uh, me and my wife, playfully have gone through, like, well, you know, with the money, but what we would do, and, you know, we do you know, get a house, you know, paid free and clear. We'd build one uh, on the farm and then we'd get our farm together and get our livestock together and start our, uh, you know, our meat business our, and get that off the ground. And then, yeah, but, you know, that's just fun, having fun with it, having a dream, just like anyone does when they're like, oh, what would I do if I won a million or I won a lottery, you know, that type of thing. Uh, but no, I, I'm, I'm kind of just taking it, Taking it exactly how I got into this, uh, you know, the the PFL, you know, came in off of uh, just a whim, went out, let it rip. And that's kind of the same thing with this fight. I'm going to have no pressure on me. I'm probably going to be at minimum a four to one underdog, more likely probably six to one probably is how the bookies are going to label it just because it is what it is. And, you know, I like that. Um, you know, no one's expecting me to win. And, you know, most of my career, that's how a lot of my fights have been. And I like being in that situation. I like making people mad because they bet against me. <laughs> do you do you pay attention? Like, do you go in and look at the odds and stuff like that? I do. It, it adds motivation. It does. Um, I actually hate seeing that if I'm a favorite. I'm like, oh, fuck. Because <laughs> um, yeah, they just kind of go, that's not my, you know, that's not my storyline. I like being um, a very unassuming individual that people don't think much of. So, so then to follow that up, I got to ask, do you, uh, when, when you upset the masses, do you go in and look and keep your like DMs open on, on Instagram and go, all right, who did I, how many people did I piss off? How many? I'll get, I'll, get so I'll get tagged in some of the things about, you know, screw you today, you know, look at Tim, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, um, but I think I've known and people who bet probably people that probably don't bet for me or against me. Cause they never know what they, <laughs> they, they don't know what Tim Johnson is going to show up, which is through my MMA career. That's a fair assessment. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, so they give not just, uh, you know, the U.S. a, a more kind of in-depth look into who you are, but the world an in-depth look. If you were to win the whole thing, you're still going to work after or becoming a millionaire, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I'm a, like, no, no, I'll, probably, I'll probably buy my own semi. <laughs> No, yeah. and, and, I, and I think that's amazing, you know, and that's a true testament to who you are just as a person, you know, like not getting defined by, you know, just the, the one win or the million dollar check, because number one, not that I think you're going to start buying Bentleys and, and five houses, <laughs> but you might, 
Uh, but no, just being smart with the money, you, you still got to go uh, and, yeah. you know, and, and work. So I can, I truly commend you on that. You, you talked a lot about just the journey of your career. How would you sum it all up? Uh, surprising. <laughs> <laughs> like, surprising and disappointing at the, all at the same time. Just like life, you got lots of ups, lots of downs. And, you know, it's uh, not important to get yourself too high when you're on the highs and not and make sure you don't get too down when you're on the downs. Well, would, would you have a regular full-time job? Uh, I'm assuming a very happy life outside of fighting. What what pulls you into it? What continues to pull? Is it just a love for fighting, a love for punching people? What is it? I think it's just I've been doing it so dang long. Now I don't know what else to do. <laughs> I like staying busy. Um, I like having, you know, because I'm, I'm also in the military. Uh, so I'm doing that, you know, once a month, a couple times a year. And, um, you know, a couple of weeks a year and, uh, you know, uh, just working and fighting and, and then what people forget, it's called prize fighting. It's supposed to be money on top of your income, <laughs> you know, otherwise you're just fighting to make, otherwise you're just fighting to, you know, break even essentially on the year, you know, you no, know, it's supposed to be prize fighting. I'm supposed to have all my bills taken care of with a regular job. And then all the money I bring in from fighting goes elsewhere. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I do want to say, first and foremost, uh, I should have started to start it off instead of that corny joke. Uh, in all seriousness, thank you for your service. Um, I, I have the utmost respect for those who serve our country. And, and, you know, a lot going on in the world. We're not going to get political, but I just want to ask you as someone who has done both, you know, serving and being a prize fighter. Do you feel like we should continue to have sports as our mind as sports are a break? from politics and, and let's not always drag it in. It's 2024. It's going to get dragged in, but yeah. would you like to see just sport and, and like state separate? Yeah. If you look at my Instagram page, I barely, I, there's not one political post on there. And with that said, I am an extremely political person. I'll probably be running for some sort of office here in the next five, six years. Um, I'll probably start off with the County Sheriff because they have more power than governors. But anyways, <laughs> uh, um, yeah, um, I'm a very political person, but I don't don't put it out of my Instagram. I don't I don't post about it. Um, it's not it's not the place. I mean, I know I got people from both sides of the aisle that don't want to see. They want to see my life. Want to see me training. Want to do all that kind of stuff. They don't. Um, uh, in certain aspects, I probably wouldn't morally cross a line on some stuff. But overall, I try to keep it pretty pretty business only <laughs> yeah and that's smart and, and i i do want to ask because i wasn't expecting to hear that news but and without getting too deep into it but uh what led you to that decision is it just your time in the military and then wanting to serve you know just where you're from or where you're at uh what, what um, led you well being in the military i have to be i have to be extremely careful when i say pub publicly um I, I can come back and bite you uh career wise so um yeah there's that aspect and um just in general um yeah unless i can do a one-on-one -on -one conversation sit down with someone i'm not going to be commenting on social media that much i'm not going to get into a freaking social media fight with someone i disagree with because it does nothing you're not going to change right. anyone's yeah. mind no I, absolutely <laughs> yeah. i completely yeah. understand that Let, let's uh i'll let you get out of here i want to wrap up on this if you start your your own meat company you got to be able to, to uh, ship nationwide because yep. i'm all in i'm all in yep. if, there, if be... there's anyone who probably knows what damn good meat quality is it's tim yep. johnson and uh I, I love the grill man so I'll yeah be that's gonna be over. everything's gonna be pasture raised that's uh, so we're gonna have pasture raised hogs we're gonna have pasture raised uh beef um you know we're gonna you know do it the old school way um raise it like it used to like our like my you know my ancestors did um, you know, all my family, I got all my friends and family up in middle of nowhere, Minnesota, do conventional farming. I'm not going to talk shit about it. That's uh, their living. But, you know, I think we got to go back to our roots a little bit with uh, where our food comes from. <laughs> I don't disagree. I do not disagree. Yeah. Well, uh, when you kick that off, I will be the biggest supporter of it. <laughs> uh, on August 2nd, what should fans expect when they tune into you versus Dennis Goldsoft? Uh you know what? Good question. I'm just, maybe I should run through what they expect. <laughs> um, it's going to be high action. Um, I wouldn't expect it to get past second round. 
I love it. I love it. I'm hoping to be there. And I, I want to say, you know, not just Tim Johnson, the fighter, but Tim Johnson, the person. It's a pleasure and honor to, to meet you virtually and, and have the opportunity <laughs> to speak to you. All the best to you. I love the story. I, I love, you know, the focus on both personal life and business life. I love that there's multiple different you're you're a Swiss Army knife, man. And, uh, you, you can do so much uh, just inside the cage and outside. And I think you're a, a great figure for MMA because you're not just defined by wins, losses, and results in the cage. So thank you for giving me the time. And uh, hopefully get to see you in Nashville. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. Thank you.